Hello, my name is Jonathan Edwards and I'm the Managing Director of Integral IT based in North Yorkshire. Welcome to the first video in the Do It Yourself Office 365 series. In this first video, what we're going to do is configure Office 365 on a basic level so you can send and receive emails. Now I've made a couple of assumptions. The first assumption is that you have purchased your copy of Office 365 either through a local company or direct from Microsoft itself through the website. If you've not done that, then you'll need to pause the video and go and do it. The second assumption I've made is that you have access to your DNS records for your domain. So we're going to be using a fictitious company called Yorkshire Backup and our domain is called YorkshireBackup.com and that is hosted with 123reg. Your domain might be hosted with someone else but you need to have access to the domain records or you need to be in contact with the person who does have access to the domain records. So the first thing we're going to do if you browse to https login.microsoftonline.com and there you're going to enter your Office 365 admin account and your password. If you've bought this via Microsoft you should have received an email with de these details on. Click on sign in and it'll straight away ask you to change your password. So we'll put in the old password and then we'll type a new password. Now what you'll see now is the basic Office 365 Admin Center. And the very first thing we're going to do is add our YorkshireBackup.com domain into the domain section of the admin center. So click on domains. We want to add a domain. And then click on let's get started. It's asking us to enter the name of the domain. So we'll type in there yorkshirebackup.com. And then we click on next. And that goes and searches for some information about our domain. What we now have to do is we have to prove to Microsoft that that domain belongs to us and not anybody else. So it's asking us to add a DNS entry into the domain record. Now I'm going to do this manually uh, at 123reg. If someone else looks after your DNS, then if you make a print screen of this and send it to them. I'm going to click on 123reg into my manage domain and there's a section called manage DNS. Now this might be something different if you're using another host but on 123reg we click on manage DNS. We then want to click on advanced DNS and what we want to do is add a TXT record. It's not very complicated so you just need to follow the instructions. It's a TXT record. The host name is the at symbol and the destination is this here. So we're just copying and pasting. And then we click add. Now we've added that domain record it can take quite a few hours for it to take effect. So I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes. I'm going to pause this video for 10 minutes and come back to it. So I've left the video for a couple of minutes. I'm going to go back to my Microsoft screen and I'm going to click on I've added the record. That's going to verify. And as you can see, it's verified. So that's just taken a couple of minutes. The next thing is we click on next. So this screen is where we're converting any user accounts that we've created from the default domain which is this horrible yorkshirebackup.onmicrosoft.com to just our yorkshirebackup.com domain. 
So because we've not created any users, the only user listed here is the admin. But we'll go ahead and update that. And then we'll click on Update Selected Users. That's been done. Then we click on Next. So the next screen is where we can add all the people inside our business. So YorkshireBackup.com is a small business and there's just two people. There's Percy Jackson and there's his son Jimmy. So we'll add those in there. And simply click on add these users. We'll get confirmation that these two users have been added along with some passwords. So I'm just going to print this screen for now. So I've got a copy of their passwords. If we then click on next. So in the next screen, it's going to ask us to update our DNS records. Now this sounds much scarier than it actually is. The first thing I want you to do is just click on next. And my recommendation for this next step is to click on no, I have an existing website or prefer to manage my own DNS records. Click on next. So on the next screen, it's going to ask you which services do you want to use with YorkshireBackup.com. I'm just going to tick Outlook for this. If you are using Skype for Business or Instant Messaging or Mobile Device Management, then please keep these ticked. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to be using Outlook. So we untick the other two and click on next. Now the scary part. What it's going to ask us to do is enter all these DNS records. Now you'll see the top record there is called an MX record. What I've done is create a little, little image to explain how this works. It's a very basic concept. If I'm sat at my desk and I send an email to jim at yourcompany.com, it's a little bit like the old fashioned telephone books. Do you know when you used to look up someone's surname and that used to correspond to their phone number? So what an MX record does is work like an old fashioned telephone book and it tells it tells us where this email needs to be sent. So I send an email to jim at yourcompany.com and the MX record tells us actually yourcompany.com is hosted with Microsoft so please send the email there. And that's how it's routed to Office 365 and then eventually down to the person's outlook. Very basic diagram but that's how it works. So. What Office 365 is asking us to do now is to create all these records so that you can communicate via email and we can point everything at the Office 365 cloud. So again, within here, we're going to create an MX record, the first thing. So the host name is this at sign. So we type that in there. We change that to MX. The priority is listed here, which is zero. And then the destination is this here. So we can just copy and paste that into there and simply, simply click on add. And that adds the MX record. Now, once that's added, if we can look for any more MX records, and we can see there's another two here, and these are just pointing to one, two, three reg. So if we go back to this diagram, if we've got three MX records all pointing in different directions, then it's going to end up a little bit of a mess. So we've created our MX record there. That's all we need. So we're able to just simply delete the rest, the other two. And they've gone. So back to our Office 365. It now wants us to create two C name records. So we click on this, choose C name, and the host name is auto discover. And that needs to point to auto discover.outlook.com. So I'm just going to copy that, punch that into that. Another C name here. So that's MOSOID. And that's going to point to there. And we'll just simply add that. Final one is a TXT record, host name, 
at. So I'm just going to copy this long value here. The next record is a TXT. I'm going to choose that from there. I'm going to copy that in there, and that's going to create that record. And that's done. Now, now that we've done that, it can take quite a number of hours to actually update. Usually, to be honest, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes, but we do have to allow for a bit of time. So I'll pause this video now and I'll come back in a few minutes and I will check. I'll check now actually. Has it, has it updated? Oh, it's done it already. So we're all set up to go. We can click on finish. We have our domain in there and we have our two user accounts. So the basic setup of Office 365 for email is now completed. If you've got any questions about this video or you need help moving to Office 365, then please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is on the screen now. Also, as a special offer for people who, who watch this video and mention it to me, I can give you 10% discount from the Office 365 prices on the Microsoft website. So if you're thinking about moving to Office 365 or you're already with Office 365 and you're looking to renew, then I can give you a 10% discount on that. Thanks for watching.